welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamara Todd and I'm a pro makeup artist from London. In this makeup video I'm going to teach you how to create this crystal eye makeup look. Let's get to it. Alright guys, so I prepared one side of my eye, you can see this here, and we're going to start molding the other side. Now I have the sellotape in here that will help me and you to create a neater look, so we will start with this step first. So I'm taking a standard sellotape and cutting a piece of it. And I need to make sure that both of the eyes are matching the same direction. So I will be looking in the mirror and positioning this sellotape to match the other side. The next step is I'm going to line all around the eye inside the waterline with a black color. And I am using Urban Decay Black Kajal from a collection prints in a color so dark. You don't have to be super precise at this stage of the makeup application because as you can tell the eye look is super strong and there is a lot of dark color involved around the eye rim so I actually can be as messy as I like at this stage. But what I need to do is, is just make sure that I pack the black color all inside my eye because I want that maximum definition around the lashes. Be more careful around their inner corners of the eyes because you don't want them too dark over there. But everything around here and I'm dragging that black kajal almost till the end until I hit nothing on the sellotape. You can see how great this trick is because you can be as messy as you like and you actually can draw over the sellotape and like this when you will open it up you will have a super sharp line. Now before the pencil sets I'm going to take the Sigma Pencil E30 brush looks like this. It's a tapered brush I think it is synthetic. I think all of Sigma brushes are synthetic. I hope I'm right on this front. And any synthetic products make me super happy because that means that the animals were not suffering in the creation of the product. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that I blend that line <clears throat> into the skin and make it a little bit fuzzier because this is a smoky eye tutorial so we need to make sure that there is no harsh lines when blending one color into another one. I'm not applying black color past three quarters of my eye because I want to keep the middle part lighter. Then I'm moving on to the blending brush. This one is uh, 217 from MAC this is the old edition, so these are animal, uh, this is animal um, hair, which is not great, but as far as I'm aware, MAC now has redone all of their brushes, and they now have a little S letter to them, which means that they're synthetic, and I'm really hoping that this 217 brush, which has been in my kit for almost 10 years now, there is now a synthetic version of it. I use this brush to blend uh, the other side. Now if you are quite messy or not super precise with your blending, perhaps take a fresh brush, clean, product-free brush. But because obviously I know exactly what I'm doing, with a small blending motion and whatever is left on this brush, I can actually um, blend this product out. Yeah, you can see how quick and easy this technique is because you don't have to worry about the underneath line, you can actually just go and surely blend everything. Now I'm going to take a clean blending brush. I'm sorry guys, I don't know where this one is from. It has been in my kit for quite some time. It's a tapered blending brush, similar to um, 217 from MAC, but has a tiny bit pointier and to the brush. The eyeshadow I'm going to be using is this light brown color from Pat McGraw Labs um, V Bronze Seduction Palette. This is actually very pigmented eyeshadows 
and uh, you only need a little bit of them. Uh, they blend in really nicely. I will show you this now. Right, so I've loaded my brush. Um, sometimes when you load your brush you can also give it a little pat um, over your um, hand or a palette just to kind of push that product into the brush and also get rid of any excess. And then with the light blending motions, I'm going to start building the color on top of that black um, kajal that I have just blended in. This is where I start taking the color onto my crease and into the inner corner of my eye. Now guys, have a look. With the small blending motions like this, into the inner corner of my eye. This is going to blend the color in and also visually make my eye bigger, larger. So all of this area in here I'm going to cover in a brown color which will elongate my eye and make it super super big looking. And um, for this makeup look that was my idea. This is the New Year's makeup celebration and obviously when you celebrate New Year most likely it's during the night and uh, this makeup look is focused on making the eyes appear larger, as big as possible. So in the nightclub or in a restaurant, whatever you guys are going to be celebrating your new year, so your eyes stand out so everybody can see how beautiful your eyes look. How beautiful and big. So here you see, I'm using different motions. I'm swiping across. I'm also using a little bit of a rounded motions. My goal here is to slowly build the color, slowly guys, don't blob straight away because once it's on it's really hard to get rid of the color, but with the light blending motions you can always add more if needs to. I can also start layering a little bit more color underneath my eye with whatever is left on the brush, here back and forth. So the brush now barely has any product left. And you can repeat that motion back and forth like this now. Now we need to darken the outer corner of the eye and double up that black kajal that we've done in the in the beginning of this look, double it up with the black eyeshadow for that super strong sultry and punchy look. So the eyeshadow I'm going to be using is the black shadow from Chanel. Uh, the color is 118 Midnight. It's a very intense black eyeshadow. I have had it for ages. There's so much product in that eyeshadow that I don't know when it's ever going to be done. <laughs> but it's a very beautiful pigmented um, eyeshadow. And the brush I'm using is the discontinued brush from Louise Young collection. Now, this brush came together with the eyeshadow palette. I don't think these brushes are available on its own anymore. Um, I'm hunting for one, so if you actually know where to get one, please comment underneath because I really want more of these brushes in my life. I can't find another detailing brush as flat and as elongated as this one. It's the only brush in that shape that I have. So guys, if you know where to get another Louise Young Thin Eyeshadow brush, it is so tiny and so perfect, please let me know. Okay, so with the patting motions from the outer corner of my eye, I start loading the black eyeshadow with the ridge of the, of the brush and packing the color. I hope you guys can see. It's not the most convenient way of doing your makeup, but I hope I can teach you anyway. So, underneath the lashes, with the patting and swiping motions, just load that black underneath. We want that line to be super intense. And then moving upwards, three quarters under eye, again with the patting motions. The key here is not to create any sharp lines. So work in the small areas and only pack the color near the lash line. Once you unloaded the brush near the lash line, then you can move upwards with like a small kind of patting and lifting, patting and lifting motions. You can blend the black color up 
You can work in between two brushes. The small bullet brush from uh, Sigma E30. Uh, don't load it again, just with whatever was left from the previous blending. You can just pat it very lightly. The higher up you go, the lighter your patting motions should be for that perfect blending. And again, coming back to my blending brush and uh, Pat McGrath brown eyeshadow. I'm going to go over everything that I have blended and finish off the blending again. Now we're moving on onto the eyelid and um, I need to prepare the base for the shimmery eyeshadow and I will be using this cream base from Stash. This is um, almost like a concealer formula but I think it was advertised as to be used as an eyeshadow primer but honestly you can use your products whichever way um, works for you just because it says that it's an eyeshadow primer or concealer it doesn't mean that you cannot use it for anything else so I am using a concealer brush from Sigma F70 concealer I am lightly applying this cream base onto the moving part of my eye up until the crease now I don't have a goal to create a cut crease so I'm not going to be making that sharp cutting line across what I want to do is just create the perfect base for further eyeshadows to adhere when you reach that point um, around the outer corner edge of your eye now be careful because you don't want that line to be too sharp so pack most of your product in the inner corner here and then drag it out towards the end because here you want to leave that area that blends from one color into, into the other actually before I'm gonna move on to the shimmery eyeshadow I will go over with my bullet brush and just join the cream product into my black eyeshadow product with the light patting motions again just for that smoother transition because shimmer and black eyeshadow they don't blend really well it's really easy to make a mess so I advise you to blend everything before applying your shimmery eyeshadows for the shimmery eyeshadow I'm going to be using the same V bronze seduction palette from Pat McGrath and I'm going to apply this color over here. Taking any flat eyeshadow brush, packing the color onto the brush, and again with the patting motions, I'm going to apply that eyeshadow onto the area that I have just prepped. When working with anything that is shimmer or glitter, you don't want to swipe back and forth too much because the shimmery products are one of the trickiest products especially when there is so much pigment in them the shimmer tends to move a lot and fall out a lot so you don't want to disturb it you almost want to just pat it pat it pat it and then pat it on to adhere onto the base that we've just created so back and forth pat 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 Ta -da! okay guys the next step is to line the top part of my eye so I'm taking black gel liner from Inglot number 77 and a thinnest art brush if you guys haven't seen my cat eyeliner tutorial on the YouTube please check it out I'm gonna try to link it somewhere up here <laughs> um, so yeah check it out I go into the detail about creating feline eyeliner all of the tools you need for it all of the brushes I'm using and a few techniques on how you guys can perfect your eyeliner game but uh, I will be using false lashes for this look so and I'm actually going to apply them a little bit above my natural lash line just to lift the outer corners of my eyes a little bit more for this look so I need to make sure that that gap in here will be filled in 
and again you are dragging this color into nothing in the outer corner all of these layers they're going to last better throughout the night and also create more depth in your makeup look again I need to make sure that I blend everything so I am taking my tapered bullet brush and making sure that I'm blending all of the edges of this liner around here trying not to disturb the shimmery eyeshadow that we've done I know it's hard but the right tools will help you to achieve that with this liner guys you need to work really quick because it sets in a minute so if you didn't blend if you left your blending for later <laughs> it will be impossible to get rid of the sharp line almost forgot about the inner part of the liner nearly moved on to the next stage right so I want the inner part of this liner to be defined and to be a little bit elongated almost like cat like but n not necessarily as strong or as long I'm gonna start from the inner corner and just drag a tiny bit to the to the inner part here and also these part around here I need to join into the black color that I have already blended there something along these lines just need to make sure that this line and this line Guys, this is so not comfortable. My mirror is so far. Here. Let me just double check in the mirror. This side came out better than the other. <laughs> there is always one side, huh? I want to show you this amazing brush from Inglot. Um, 10S. This is uh, one of the smallest blending brushes in my kit I only have one but I always aim to buy another one but it just never happens so what I'm gonna do is I am going to use it as a detailer and um, deepen the crease a little bit more so now I'm gonna use this stronger um, brown color from the palette and I just need to create a bit more depth in my crease. So actually taking a mirror and looking right in front of me with my eyes open, looking directly into the mirror, I'm gonna take that brush and just slot it right into that crease and just go over a little bit back and forth. Now this will work for someone with just as prominent crease line as mine. If you're more of a monolid person then for you just blending one color from another without defining that area here probably will be better for this look but yeah just give it a go I wanted to show you this detailer brush because it's a really amazing it's so fine and it literally just goes in a crease perfectly and just back and forth back and forth and I just needed to deepen that kind of an area around here in between my shimmer and my blending color my next stage is going to be the lashes but before I do the lashes I just want to take a little bit of this cream base from Stash um, and just clean up underneath my brow bone area. You can see only a light layer is needed for this look. You don't need a super strong under eye definition, but you can see how nicely it kind of blends into my brown color and just creates a little bit sharper under brow area here. And while I'm on the brows as well, I want to show you. I want to show you this amazing product from Schwarzkopf. Got to be. If you guys know, they have yellow hairspray that is extremely hardcore spraying hairspray. Literally, that does not move. It's like I don't know. It's like your hair becomes iron or rock. <laughs> so it's very strong hairspray. And now they came out with the brow gel um, of the same strength. I really like this product because what I find with the tinted eyebrow gels, my eyebrows are quite strong already. So they're much darker than my blonde hair at the moment. So if I'm using any tinted brow gels that are uh, with a strong pigment in them they just make my brows even stronger 
and I'm not after that look, especially now while I'm blonde. So I am rating transparent gels much more at this point. So, oh my god, I can just feel <laughs> it just hardens on my eyebrows. But I find once you set your eyebrows, this is one of these gels that doesn't budge. And I really like that about products when they actually do what they're supposed to do. There is another great product from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's a brow freeze, but it's not gel. It's more like waxy texture. And I know a lot of makeup artists love it, but I just can't seem to work it out. Every time I apply it, and in order for that to deliver, I need to apply more. And then I find once it dries, if you move the eyebrows, it just leaves a little bit of a white residue on the hair. And I really don't like it, so I, at the moment, really rate the Got To Be product because it really works. If you guys have tried it before, let me know, do you guys rate it? Or maybe you know of another amazing brow gel that I don't know about, so pop this in the comments too. Now, brows are done, we're gonna move on to the lashes. And first I'm gonna curl my lashes because they're super straight and I need to do another eyelash perm soon but I have been postponing that. So the eyelash curlers I'm using are from Dear Dahlia. I really like these eyelash curlers. I find that they're ones of the strongest that I have tried. They just bend my lashes in one clamp. The eyelashes I'm going to show you are the eyelashes from Kiss Lash Couture. It's a faux mink. Again, makes me really happy. We're not torturing animals anymore, we can do anything faux and it looks just the same as the fur really. So these lashes are in the model Soar. They are medium length, quite full but not the longest ones. Honestly I could have taken a little bit longer lash but I couldn't find it. And the glue I'm going to be using is the Swede, latex based glue from Swede. Mm, again, is not my favorite. I bought it to try it out, but honestly, I much prefer the duo glue. And for me, nothing can be duo glue. It's uh, one of the most, uh, the easiest to use, uh, most bulletproof um, eyelash glues out there. Once you put your lashes on with duo glue, literally, they stay for days. I have. Um, coated my lash in the glue. I need to give it a few moments to kind of dry a little bit, to get tacky. It's a very similar feel to Duo, but it's just not the same. I just feel that this glue is, I don't know. If, if Duo is 100 out of 100, then this one is, I don't know, maybe 70 out of 100. Not my favorite, basically. When I dry my eyelashes, I like to give them a little band back and forth, back and forth like this, just so when I'm applying them, that uh, shape goes uh, easier on my eyes, because my eyes are quite almond, and not all of the lashes can glue easy on my eye shape. So again, chin up, eyes down, mirror underneath you. This is your easiest way of applying eyelashes because like that you're stretching your eyelid and then you're placing your lash from the top down and hold it in the middle. Try to get as close as possible to your natural lashes. Now I like to use a little uh, tweezers once I place the middle part, I like to take the tweezers and kind of help the inner part. See, it lifts up a little. So I should have waited longer for the glue, but hey. And then you grab the outer corner. I told you that I want that outer corner to be a little bit higher up for that lifted outer corner look. So my goal was to come as close as possible to my inner corner, eyelashes, and then start lifting the outer corner a little bit higher. And because we have applied that black liner underneath, once you coat your lashes and, <clears throat> and the fake lashes uh, in the mascara, that gap won't be visible. In between my lash and this lash there is actually a millimeter of a gap 
So what that does is that it lifts everything upwards and also, but honestly, these lashes could have been a little bit longer for me, but hey. That would be great for somebody who doesn't have as much space in between the eyes or somebody who is more petite. I'm 5'11", I am a large girl with a large facial features, so <laughs> I need everything larger, including the lashes. Here. Okay, so I'm going to let them sit for a few moments for the glue to take in fully, and then I'm going to do the mascara. A few moments have passed and um, the eyelashes have taken in, so now it's mascara time. Mascara I'm going to be using is from Pat McGrath Fetish Eyes Mascara. I've just got it, so it's my second time using it. Uh, when I used it on my lashes without the false lashes, I actually really, really liked how it looked on me. It boosted my lashes a little bit, elongated them, coated them nicely, but they did not clump. And this I rate a lot in mascara ones and mascaras. The only thing that I can say that this is not waterproof, and throughout the day my bottom lashes touching my um, cheek have been transferring a little bit. But that's because my bottom lashes is super, super long and I like to coat them. So yeah, I really like this mascara. So I am going and merging my natural lashes together with these lashes and actually I'm going to emphasize on the outer corner and kind of push it, it, push it up even more just for that cat-like finish and a bit more open eyes because we have closed the waterline by adding black color. So now I need to make sure that throughout the night my eyes are still defined and huge. Because this is how I like it when I go out. Here. Yeah, I don't mind these lashes now that they're fully coated, but without mascara, for me personally, it was just not enough. Um, usually, when I go out, I like to use Noir lashes, and they have a very cool eyelash shape. Iris is the one I really rate, but I have used them so many times now, so they're not really video worthy anymore. Now don't forget the bottom lashes because we have so much color under the eye. We really need to coat them really well for that full impact look. My bottom lashes has gone so long now that I have been using the Revita Lash Serum. My top lashes have grown and my bottom lashes too which is don't really need them that long but I think if you apply Revita lash on the top lash I think the bottom almost automatically grows there's not much you can do with it but hey can't complain there happy with that all right guys now on to the fun part which is sparkle these are the sparkles that I got on Amazon this whole pack cost me about 11 or 12 pounds if I remember it correctly there's so many different shapes in here from the larger shape and going down 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 into super tiny ones I have not been using the big ones just yet probably will uh, at some point but I really like the shapes from three four five and six these are the ones that you can see overlaid in here and these are the ones that we will be stashing now right so the glue I'm going to be using is the same glue the sweet glue I'm gonna pop a little bit on the back of my hand and there are many different ways how to apply these gemstones. I know that there are sticky pencils that you can just touch the, the top of the gem and then it will pick it up but what I find in the past that every time I would use such pencils it would stain the top of the gem and leave a residue like a waxy residue uh, either transparent or white these are the usual usual colors that these pencils come in. So for me personally, I don't know, I don't like it. So I am using tweezers, but again, it's just faster for me. So what I'm doing is I am layering these gems on the table or on a little tray or a little palette. I have dishes like this 
and I pick up the gem from there. But again, for, for some of you this may be a little bit more of a fiddly option, but you just do what's easier for you. So yeah, so I'm quite quick and picking up the gem like that. Uh, and then I'm gonna touch it a tiny bit on the glue. And the next step is to mirror the pattern that I have created on this side onto here. Now this is the hardest part, I think. <laughs> For some people it may be easier to layer eye stage by stage, so everything you do on one side straight away do on the other side. That's probably how I would do it, but for the fastness of this video, I wanted to already create one eye. Having a mirror right in front of me, I've picked up the medium gemstone. Oh, actually, this is the biggest one I've picked up. And I'm gonna mimic, right? How <laughs> to make it so you can see. So I need to stick that big one on here. And then while the glue is not dry, I can actually, with the back of my tweezers, Gently move it in place here. As it is a nighttime look, it's not a photo shoot, so I mean, precision is great, but if you miss a millimeter, nobody will notice. If it's a photo shoot, of course, then you have to really spend more time making it as symmetrical and as perfect as possible, but for the night out, really, we can get away with some imperfections. The key here is to mix bigger gemstones and the smaller gemstones um, together and also apply them in a clusters. So for example, layer a bigger gemstone and then put the smaller ones around it in like a cluster type. It's the best I can explain it. You can of course layer in like a one straight line if you want, but I feel like when you cluster them, they just look the best. So here is my bigger gem and then close to it over here, I'm gonna pop a smaller gem in here. And like this and so on. I may speed it up the process for you so you don't have to sit with me all through these tiny gems. So let me speed it up for you. If you've done a mistake and you put the gem somewhere and you realize that you don't like the position, before the glue dries, just take a clean cotton bud and quickly dab the glue off. Once the glue dries, of course you can peel it off after, but what I find is that once it's dried and if you peel off, you may open up the eyeshadow. The best way is to act fast and clean up any mistakes quickly. The good thing about this glue is it actually sets transparent so you can get away with the tiny mistakes. But of course, ideally is if you work as clean as possible, but it is not always possible, is it? Okay, and the last three gems, I want to be more spread out in between, and following my eyeshadows and kind of blending into the temples like this throughout the night when you're gonna move and dance. It's going to look as if you have the concentration of these gems. It's almost like a stars in the sky in here and then they will spread out into nothing. But of course you can get as creative as you guys want. This, uh, there is no set rules. And creative looks like this, I mean, take an inspiration and then make it yours. This is the moment of truth. Now we're gonna take off the Scylla tape and hope for the best. Oh, that just makes me so happy. The other side. Right, so now we need to make sure that the eyes are as same as possible. Now I can see that this one here is a little bit more elongated and goes more towards the temple because the sellotape piece was longer. Nothing wrong with that. All I have to do is just drag this one out a little bit more. For that I'm going to take my angled brush from my Kitco 1.10 this is a very fine angle brush and what I'm gonna do is very carefully I'm gonna try manually add that line 
in here there you can see it's a very fine adjustment that makes all the difference now I'm gonna grab a mirror and have a look in the middle here just make sure that it's as symmetrical as possible this is where you guys going to be safer putting the sellotape side by side before applying any eyeshadow I think like this just will be easier to see if there's any mistakes now I think this part here goes a little bit higher as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the same angled brush with whatever is left on it so yeah I can see that's already much better so all it needed is just kind of fine tuning what else you can do is you can take that blending brush with that brown eyeshadow that you have and also have a look so here it just blends into nothing into temple and here because my line was a little bit shorter I can just manually follow the shadowing and just smoke it out a little bit more into the temple here I think I hope <laughs> on camera it's as even as possible I mean it's not the easiest task to to do makeup and teach you the mirror situation here is also very limited now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a baby wipe or makeup remover wipe and just clean up underneath the eye a tiny bit more be very careful not to get rid of all the blending that you did but just cleaning up that mess underneath here because now we will move on to concealer and uh, concealer will also clean up a little bit more but you don't want to apply concealer on a messy eyeshadow okay so I'm gonna do my skin off camera I hope you guys won't be requesting the skin because I'm not recording it so let me finish off the makeup look and I'm gonna show you the lip color I'm gonna be using alright guys so now that my skin is done I want to show you the lip color that I will be using is the borderline lip liner from peaches and cream this is a wonderful lip liner they come in a package of five I think super affordable very creamy formula the only thing is they're not waterproof but because they're not waterproof they are so much more comfortable to wear on the lips and as I am normally more on a dry side uh, including my lips and I don't like the feeling of super um, drying lipsticks or lip liners these ones personally for me work really well I'm gonna start lining my lip and I love to overline my lips. I love that look. So I'm gonna shut up <laughs> and do this in the quiet. You can feel inside the lip if you want, but I think this time I'm gonna leave it out. I really like the look of the Cupid's bow not being super V-shaped like. <laughs> is that even a thing? But what I like is uh, nowadays it's really trendy to fill in that inner part and make it a little bit less prominent. So almost having that lip shape that goes into O shape. And I actually really like it on me. So this is what I'm going to try and achieve now. Don't forget to join the inner corners of the lips. There is nothing worse than doing your lip, filling it in, and then throughout the night, when you talk, when you talk and smile, you leave these gaps around here, especially if you're using red lipstick. Guys, I can't even tell you, definitely always make sure that you are filling in those inner corners in here. I really like that at the moment. I mean, you guys know the lip shape change with the trends, the trends change and the lip shape change with the trends. So at the moment this lip shape is um, quite popular and trendy. So the lip, the lip color from Pat McGrath and the name for this one is Peep Show. This is my new lipstick. I have tried it once before. The finish of this lip is velvety. Um, it's very comfortable for a velvet lipstick it's quite creamy but one thing I noticed because it's comfortable to wear and because it's so creamy 
it's not the most long wearing formula. You can actually feel it's moving on your lips. The color is nice and if your lips are more on the dry side, I would say this velvet lipstick would be a good choice for you. And if you don't mind reapplying your lipstick throughout the night, then this is a very nice formula and a very nice color. I like to go over with a cotton bud and just uh, blend everything together, including the edges of my lips. I don't like when lips are super, super sharp. No, it's not the right thing to say. I like when lips are super sharp. But for this look, I want the definition around the mouth to be a little bit softer. So I'm just gonna gently blend this out. Alright guys, so this is my New Year's crystal eye look. I hope you enjoyed creating it with me. Let me know in the comments if there's any other looks I can create for you in my next videos. Happy New Year and I see you on my next one.